Hi there everyone, my name's Luke and welcome to my channel and uh, today I'm happy to be showing you an item that I've finally got that I've been waiting for for quite some time and that's this, the 0.77 times reducer flattener for the Esprit 120, Esprit 150 and the Evo Star 150ED. Now the Esprit 120, which is my main telescope, is actually natively 840mm focal length and it's 120mm aperture which makes it an f7 telescope and uh, this 0.77 reducer uh, also acts as a flattener and it's going to take it right down to 644 millimeters focal length um, so it's going to give you a wider apparent field of view and it's actually going to speed up the photographic capture uh, to f5.4 and um, I've looked at a few calculators online that show you like equivalent exposure lengths and things like that. Uh, and for me to take a 1000 second exposure at f7, to match it in terms of brightness, uh, I'd actually only need to take a 600 second exposure with this reducer on. So hopefully it should speed up data capture a little bit on all those targets that will fit into this new field of view. Now, I'm not actually going to be getting rid of my original uh, flattener that I bought to use with this telescope because it works extremely well and on some objects I might actually want that little bit more focal length but I can honestly see myself using this uh, nearly all the time going forth if it works as well as advertised um, and that's mainly down to the fact that currently with this I'm sampling the sky at 0.92 arc seconds per pixel uh, if memory serves with my 3.75 uh, micron pixel camera that is and that is a fine sampling rate and perhaps too fine for how, uh, how good my sky conditions often are I don't think generally the seeing conditions are good enough to allow imaging at that sort of resolution uh, to be an advantage so with this reducer on that takes it down to I believe 1.2 arc seconds per pixel and uh, while still quite a fine sampling rate that's certainly a little bit more reasonable and uh, I suppose mathematically it suggests that you're giving up some resolution and uh, you probably are but whether it's actually noticeable or not in a final image uh, remains to be seen my guess is it probably won't be for my type of imaging so i've just taken it out of the box now and it comes packaged in this kind of sandwiched foam container which is in my opinion really quite good packaging um let's take that off uh first impressions are it's absolutely massive um, and so weighty. I think I've actually owned telescopes that weighed less than just this. Um, that's pretty huge. I'll just, um, I'll just take this one off, I think, and we can look at them side by side. All right, so I've got both in hand here, and uh, I don't know if that's apparent to you guys uh, from that position, but wow, that's quite a difference in size. Um, the internal barrel that actually fits inside the focus of tube you have to unscrew this locking ring mechanism to fit this um, is the same as the external barrel size of the 120 field flatter um, this outer segment which is actually extremely weighty too um, that actually sits outside and has an m48 i do believe thread on this side to use the normal um, reducer in that guys you have to put on this which also comes in the box and just kind of as you can see it's just a screw on attachment that terminates in m48 threads so i just thought i'd get both flatteners and give them a quick weigh for you to try and show you what i'm talking about in terms of the weight difference uh, these are all zeroed and ready to go so this is coming up as 295 grams um, in the guys you'll actually be using it most of you with that adapter on more like 363 um, plus lens caps that I have on to try and keep dust out in this situation because uh, I'm doing all this outside obviously so 363 uh, this I'll just leave the lens caps on 918 grams um, that's quite a big difference so it's worth noting like I mentioned um, you actually need to take off sorry about the horrendous noise this thing's making you actually need to take off this adapter on your Esprit, which is used for most everything else. Um, feels a bit weird, but there you are. Uh, and that's because when you take off this cap, um, yeah, this is actually gonna fit inside this part of the barrel to add the green cap on. So I've just tightened that all the way to the end of the threads there and that's not actually where I'm going to use it. 
I will adjust final camera rotation once I've put the camera on by actually loosening the flatter off a tiny little bit and performing a final tighten with this locking ring. I thought before we move away uh, from the subject of comparison between these two, perhaps in size, um, it might be interesting for some of you to know that it's actually going to be quite a lot shorter overall length for the rig uh, when it's used in this guise with the reducer. Um, if I just hold this up to the side here with uh, kind of threads roughly where they would uh, sit, sort of like this, you can almost see there, uh, that's where that would fit. And if I just put the flattener there, it's, it's already a centimetre or so shorter, but I happen to know that I actually need to wind this all the way in to just 35 millimetres uh, protrusion on the focus of gradation there, instead of where it currently is, which is about 77, 78 millimetres. So uh, for some of you who have perhaps tripods and you're worried about scopes, uh, the, the rear end of the camera and things colliding with those tripod legs, which is a real concern with a long refractor, um, that might be a point of interest for you guys. We've got the camera now and I just thought we'd finish off installation while you watch for anybody interested in seeing how this goes. So as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm actually going to be using this, and I'm sorry if that's picking up a lot of noise, uh, with a T-ring adapter because my filter draw system here just happens to work great with one of those and it makes my uh, interchangeability between systems that much better. So uh, I'll just leave that in that box there for a moment and I'll screw on this T adapter. All right, so the T adapter's in place and uh, I'm gonna attach the camera now and see roughly where the rotation lies. Looks like the red dot is about there. I'll just clean this before I put it in. I wouldn't advise doing this on a windy day outside, but the lighting is much better for filming. All right, so that's attached now and uh, yeah, it looks like I'm gonna to have to actually back this off and uh, perform some rotation. So I'll just work on that now uh, and eyeball it up and get it correct and um, we can move on. All right, so the focus is wound into around about 35, 40 millimeters, that sort of region. Um, that should go so I can actually just see stars and get an actual focus performed the next time it's clear, which uh, I'm not really sure it's gonna be for a little bit of time right now, but uh, yeah. It looks all ready to be used, and I'm really, really excited to start with this. Um, one final observation I can make while I'm just looking at it now is it actually does look quite a lot shorter, uh, which is quite nice. I, I do like it when the, the telescope isn't quite so long and uh, it almost feels a bit like a sail in the wind. I know it's not much of a shortening effect, but um, I don't know. After you've seen it so long uh, in one guise, it does seem like quite a change. Well. I hope that that helped some of you there. Uh, if it did, feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, if there's anything I need to be changing, the, these videos, the style, the recording, anything like that, I'm open to suggestions. Um, but yeah, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, clear skies.